Hey folks, and welcome back. We're going to be jumping into another Monsterpedia video today. Now the model I'm using this time is the Hook Horror, and this particular model was 3D printed. I will link to the file for that below if any of you are interested. Alright, let's just jump in and get started. The Hook Horror made its original debut in 1981 in White Dwarf Magazine number 12, but it was shortly after added to the official D&D roster through the Fiend Folio, though we know it now as a sort of subterranean cross between a vulture, a cockroach, and a can opener, it has gone through a lot of changes behind the scenes since its invention. There has been a wide variety of changes to its appearance, coloration, and habits over the years. It was actually quite popular with players during the time of its introduction, but Ed Greenwood, creator of the Forgotten Realms setting, famously laid into the monster for being uninteresting, saying that it only had its grotesque appearance really going for it. Now, personally, I don't agree, and doubly so about the modern hook horror. This creature has a lot going on and all kinds of things to sink your teeth into as a DM, even if, personally, I do think the weird, dark, crystal-esque appearance is actually a big selling point. So what is a hook horror? They're large, cave-dwelling, monstrosity-type creatures. They have the exoskeleton and carapace of a cockroach, the beak and claws of a vulture, and their hands are massive hooks that are used to tear their opponents apart. Their hook attacks even have a 10-foot reach, giving them some expanded options when it comes to combat. As a CR3 threat, they're meant for low-level parties or to be fought in larger groups, since they are ambush predators. Your party is most likely to encounter these monsters in cave systems or the Underdark, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that they are perfectly adapted to those environments. To start with, they have both blind sight and dark vision, the first at 60 feet, the second to 120, and they rely on echolocation, which means that to hide from a hook horror, you effectively need to be behind a solid object. Even magical invisibility won't work against them because of their echolocation. This makes them a perfect foil or complication to parties relying on stealth. To add to that, they're also excellent climbers, which makes them perfect for clinging to cave walls or crawling along the ceiling over the party's head to ambush them. Yeah, that's right, these nasty beasties can drop right on top of you in the middle of a pitch black cave, even if you're completely invisible. If that weren't scary enough, they're also able to coordinate these ambushes with each other. While the creatures themselves are completely mute in the traditional sense, that's they make no vocalizations, they do use their hooks to make patterns of clicks and clacks and other noises against their own carapace to communicate with each other. This is a language simply called hook horror, since nothing else speaks it or understands it. These clicking and scraping sounds are likely to be heard in eerie echoes throughout any cave system that the hook horrors inhabit, possibly giving your characters a heads up as to what's coming if they've encountered them before. Language and physical traits aren't the only things that make the hook horrors stand out from the pack though, as part of being intelligent enough to communicate and to fight as a coordinated group, they also live their lives in tribes. They have family units and primitive social structures. Though there's usually no more than a dozen hook horrors per tribe, they do lay eggs together in clutches, usually in a closely guarded central location that they can protect together as a group. Now personally, this made me think of almost something like the Velociraptors from Jurassic Park. Intelligent creatures with primitive communication, who strike in dark environments, they set up ambushes, and they work together. And I think if you're a new DM, or if you've just never run this monster before, that's a good angle to come at it from and to take your inspiration from. They're fast, they're going to strike in a way the players aren't expecting, and they're going to be absolutely terrifying. Even the ominous bark of the Velociraptor, used in the movies to announce its presence and send a chill through the audience, can be compared to the clicking of the hook horrors. But I digress, that was just a helpful piece of inspiration for me. Hook horrors are not only omnivorous, but they can also eat foods and even other monsters 
that are poisonous to humans. That actually makes them an interesting part of the ecosystem. Some sources even indicate that the hook horrors will collect and consume items made of silver or electrum. Possibly this includes coins. So finding a stash of hidden silver or electrum coins in their lair isn't a far-fetched reward for your player characters. Likewise, hook horrors have a molting cycle where they shed their carapace, and either through that or through slaying the creatures, your players might get their hands on those shells, which, after a suitable quest or two, you could allow them to turn them into suits of armor. No official stats are given for this, so I'd let the players tailor it to their needs a little bit, a way to get cheap, interesting, but not particularly exceptional armor during the low levels of the game. But aside from that, how would you go about incorporating hook horrors into your sessions, and what kind of encounters are they best at? Well, I've got a few ideas I can share. Hook horrors are actually really frightening in their home environment. They're a perfectly adapted predator that's smart, cunning, and coordinated. They're perfect for a horror-themed session where your players are trapped in a cave system with them, especially if your players weren't prepared for it. Hearing that clicking echo through the caves, the scraping of their claws against the stone in the distance, knowing that you can't hide from them, you can't outrun them, that they could even drop down from the ceiling right onto your head at any moment. These are perfect tools for a DM to use to scare their players or give them a more tense, action-oriented experience. Again, you can take your clues from something like the movie Jurassic Park or even Pitch Black. If you want to turn things on their head a little, you can lean into a more naturalist angle. Maybe there's a community of hook horrors living in a cave network outside of a village, and they've recently disappeared. Now, because of the disappearance, there's been an upsurge in poisonous creatures. So, after a fight with some poisonous monsters, the local druid tasks the party with going into the caves, finding out what's killing the hook horrors, and taking care of it. This could even lead to the players finding out that the cave system is connected to the Underdark, and a tense confrontation with some drow or Durgar. This could spring into a whole series of adventures on its own. They could be used for a very tense stealth encounter if you've got characters in your party built for that. Since you have to hide behind physical objects to fool their echo location, you could even build a battle map and make your players traverse it turn by turn dodging hook horrors, like a kind of stealth minigame. Or you could even take a page out of the 2015 adventure Out of the Abyss, and have the players end up with a baby hook horror in their care. Now the babies are known to imprint on the first creature they see when they hatch. If that were the players, then they could end up with a new pet, something that might be especially appropriate if the party is going to be having lots of adventures in the Underdark. And thanks to that same adventure, we even have access to a full hook horror maturation chart to see how they grow. Now will your players take care of the creature, train it for combat, return it to its tribe? It's hard to imagine anyone these days saying that hook horrors don't have anything interesting going for them. I hope after all of this that you'd agree. Now, if you've enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe, and please share it with anyone you think might enjoy it. That really helps small channels like mine. If you have a favorite monster of your own from D&D, please drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it, and it might just get added to the ever-growing list of potential Monsterpedia entries. Likewise, if you've got a favorite encounter with hook horrors, let me know that too. If you'd like to support the channel and you enjoyed this content, there are links below to buymeacoffee.com and to an Amazon wishlist, as well as an affiliate link for Eldritch Foundry. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.